Hi, this is Sam Botstein from MachineSkills.com. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all our machine tutorials. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at some creative effects chains in the machine. We're going to use the built-in beat delay and filter effects to create a filter delay, one of my favorite effects. Once we've set up the beat delay and the filter, we'll show how to map some of the important parameters to the macros. Once we've accomplished all this using the built-in machine sounds, we'll take a, a look at how to use a dedicated filter delay effect, Fab Filters Timeless 2, which has much more extensive options for modulation, and has a built-in filter. Let's get started. So what I've loaded up here is simply the default 808 kit, and I've added just one extra cowbell hit at the beginning of this second pattern. The cowbell automatically loads up with the speed delay effect, and I've just added a filter on top. To add an effect like this from the built-in library effects, just click this little plus sign and choose from the menu that results. One really nice thing about the Machine 2 software is that you can quickly reorder these effects. So here's what it sounds like the way we have it right now. So this sounds really nice, but we could just as easily click and drag this and put the filter before the delay, which will give us a very different sound. So this is a really simple way that we can get a double duty out of just two different effects. We can just change the order. So these effects are only affecting the 808 cowbell. You can see that we're in sound here as opposed to group or master. And just in case you're not familiar with what an 808 cowbell sounds like by itself, let's just solo this cowbell sound and turn off both effects. So we've taken a very simple sound and turned it into this thing that rings out for a long time. So what we're hearing here is we have the beat delay's feedback turned all the way up, and we have the filter's resonance turned almost all the way up as well. This way we hear a pretty distinct self-oscillation um, that rings out for a long time because the feedback is really high. So we have a lot of things to tweak here and a lot of things that will really help us shape the sound even live, but it's a little unwieldy to have to move between these two different effects, especially from the machine controller, not the software. Fortunately, we can map them to macros. To do this, all we need to do is change our focus from the plugin section here to the channel strip section here. So we have these four options, input, output, groove, and macro, and we're going to use macro today. So to map these, all you really have to do is select one of these slots, here's an open one, and then choose from the plugin that you're using, let's just say beat delay, and then choose from its various pages, and then finally, which pr particular parameter you'd like to map. This is really convenient. As you can see, what I've done is I've gone through and mapped just two different parameters from the beat delay, the delay time and the feedback amount, and then the rest of these are really from the filter. What I have here is the cutoff frequency, and of course resonance, followed by the amount that the LFO modulates the filter, 
and the speed of that LFO. So I can perform quite a lot of different sounds from just these macros. So this sounds really good to me, but there are some built-in limitations. For one thing, this LFO is a little limited in that its speed can only really go up to 16 hertz, which is in sort of the sub-bass range, definitely the LFO range and not the audio range. Um, so we can get some really fast modulations, but nothing that will be, you know, like a frequency modulation kind of effect or you know, a ring mod, amplitude amp modulation, none of that. So here's what it sounds like with the modulation amount all the way up and the speed all the way up. So, so that's pretty crazy, but we can take everything quite a lot further by using a more advanced plugin a VSD from FabFilter to really take this filter delay effect to the next level. So what I have loaded up here is the same exact 808 kit, and I've loaded up just an instance of FabFilter's Timeless 2. I have it on the default setting, and I've mapped just a couple of different parameters. You can see pretty clearly here that there are two separate delays with individual delay times, and a configurable tape or stretch mode. I'm going to use the tape mode for now. As well, we have, instead of just one feedback control, we have feedback controls for right, left, and cross feedback. In addition, we can drive the input level higher as well. Instead of a dry-wet, we have individual dry-wet and pan controls for each. Finally, instead of just one single dedicated LFO, we have a really extensive series of options for modulation. And here I have a LFO mapped to the filter frequency, but you can see that it isn't a simple waveform. I have the ability to add more and more steps and really create whatever shape I'd like. I like using an odd number of steps though, so I'll leave it at this three I had before, and we'll hear a little bit of you know what we can do with it. In addition to a extensively configurable LFO, which I'm using here. That filter also offers an envelope generator, an XY controller, and an um, envelope follower. I'm using an envelope follower here and is controlling this parameter. These modulation sources can be mapped to multiple locations. You can see here that I have it mapped to the delay right offset, but I could also map it to the delay left offset. I'm going to leave it the way it is now, just so we can look at the macro mapping, because you might notice that Machine has mapped all these parameters across 14 different pages. Actually, 16 different pages. So, needless to say, this is really unwieldy to try to page through all of these different parameters from the Machine Controller. What we can do, though, is move around the controls on the VSD here graphically and see what moves on our pages here. So we can see that delay 1s is this control and then we can notice what pages it is on and then hop into our macro mapping and map it. So here I've selected timeless 2, page 1, and delay 1s to control that control. I've repeated the process for the right delay time control, as well as the filter cutoff, 
and its resonance. I've also mapped this LFO time. So let's hear what this sounds like. We have the same sequence as we did with our built-in effects, except this time we're going to use um, Timeless 2. So we have much more extensive options using Timeless 2, even with just these five parameters mapped to macros. However, we could go much deeper. We could modulate more parameters using this really flexible modulation section. We could try some of the different modes. Here we're using only a low-pass filter, but we could use a high-pass or band-pass filter. We also have control over the slope. Here we have a 12 dB per octave slope, which is the least aggressive. But we could also go up to 24 or 48 decibels per octave. And I'm using the tube mode of the filter, but all of these options are available and all of them sound discreet and good. And we're only using one filter. We could turn on the other one and start modulating it and go even further. So I would encourage everyone to try building an effects chain this way and try it with both built-in effects and VSTs to see which will take you further. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all our machine tutorials, and check us out at machineskills.com.